Oh, what a day! What a lovely day! Welcome to Flat Earth Debate Uncut. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this, my main channel, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate Uncut and After Show. Now, this is a temporary measure, as I have had a community guideline strike on this, my main channel, so the live stream will continue for the next three months over on my second channel, which is Nathan Oakley. There is a link in the info box, but if you'd like to keep up with the live debate, then be sure to subscribe to Nathan Oakley channel to keep up to date with the live Flat Earth debate. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they premiere. And there's also a crypto and PayPal link in the info box below the video. Now we are joined by Jose and Anthony. How are you both doing, gentlemen? Woohoo! Morning, pretty good. Good, good, good. So yeah, slight of I was slight not aware. To... I was not aware of this community community strike. What Me neither. It's from a video that's about three and a half years old, so I wasn't aware of it till this wow. morning. But you know, I'm set up for these occurrences. That's why I've had the contingency and gone to the effort of building up the second channel. So you know, yes, the audience won't be quite so big for the first three months, but it'll still mirror with this, which is now the after show on Nathan Oakley 1980 rather than the after show on Nathan Oakley. So both channels will still get the same content. If anything, the main channel will get a taste of what the after show is like because it will get the recorded bit, i.e. this bit. So they'll get the pre-show and they'll get the after show uh, and I'll publish them in the same way. In other words, the timing that I used on the second channel will now become the timing on the first channel and the live events will now go out this, the, this whatever people are watching it on. Now, no, no, people will be watching this on Nathan Oakley 1980. I've got to wrap my head around that for a couple of days. <clears throat> so that means... But so does it, is it both channels that have been done or one or what? No, it's just my main channel. So the main channel has got a community guideline strike, and that means that I've just got to use this channel. For what reason? What did you do wrong? Um, I didn't actually download the PDF. I haven't had time. I just saw it and went, oh, okay, fair enough. It was for an old mechanics of the fourth wall, and some of the stuff we covered in those shows were pretty con controversial. I knew it when I did it, and you know, up until now I hadn't given it a second thought. You know, You think about it when you're making it. And then once you've had it up for a week or two, you think, great, well, I've got away with that. Um, you know, nothing nothing to worry about. But then three and a half years later, you get a community guidelines right for it, and you think, oh, great. You can't really foresee those things, can you? Did it did it um, breach the guidelines at the time you did the video? Uh, I would imagine so. The community guidelines only really expand. <laughs> so I would imagine so, yeah. Like oh, well. I say, I'll let you know once I read the PDF. If I bother at all, you, there's no, you can appeal them, but your chances of actually appealing a community guideline strike are pretty slim. They've got their. Do you know what? I'm gonna have to give a. I'm gonna have to give. A, I'm gonna have to give a really sincere, big, massive shout out to somebody that I would never normally give a shout out in a million years. You know, we're not live. However, we're not live, live yet. yet. No, five minutes. <laughs> right, well, in, in, in that case, then I'll well, wait until we do go live, but I'll answer my phone instead, so I'll catch you in a sec. Oh, okay. Well, I was going to say, this still goes out to the main audience, yeah, though, because this is the uncut part, and this will go to the Nathan Locally 1980 audience. But he's off. Yeah, he's gone. He's yeah, gone. there was a few a few live shows yesterday. It was very interesting. <laughs> Heard some of them. Like I mean, I miss. I actually missed this show on time because I got off work really late. I think I cast maybe the last ten or fifteen minutes, uh -huh. and and I watched the the premiere, the second, the, the in in the Nathan Oakley channel, the second time I caught it live. So it was. It felt still like a live show. I wasn't too active in chat, but it felt live because it was the actual interaction. And then I was waiting for the beat, the after show beat. And I'm like, damn it, it's like 12 hours from now. So, yeah, I didn't catch that one. <laughs> but there was a, there was a very interesting uh, hangout yesterday uh, that I caught. It was a Timmy Osman channel. <laughs> he started, I don't know, he, he opened a, a hangout and, and he started putting the hangout link out and soundly went, jumped in there some other flatter guy, a bunch of people start jumping in the panel and Arwin showed up and Arwin was there for like two hours and 
very uh, surprisingly, Timmy was being a really good host in yeah, the freaking I, I show. He was it. drunk, no, I but it. he was I, pretty I, good. I enjoyed him. I did too. I watched it, and I credit him for that exact thing. So I left a comment pointing out that he's using and affirming the consequent formal logical fallacy again after pointing it out several times. He's a bit slow, but, you know, he'll get there eventually. And then afterwards, I thought, to be fair, Tim has actually done a very good job of hosting this show. So I added a comment, and I was like, credit where you good hosting. Yeah, that was all I was looking. I said, like, man, you know, at least he actually, I think the person that had the least time to talk was soundly. For some reason, he, I mean, he was just gone. You know, his brain was drunk or whatever. And he like, I get to you in a second. All right, you got 30 seconds. And then went back to arguing. Arguing, all right, you got up to five minutes. You can say whatever you want. I go like, holy shit, that was hilarious. Yeah, that's pretty good. So only is showing his ugly mug everywhere now. Just getting some breakfast right over here. You there, Anthony? Anthony? Oh, he left you alone. I'm gonna, I might start a couple of minutes early just to make sure that the stream runs smoothly. If it doesn't, I've then got a few minutes okay. at least to try and solve the problem if there is one. Hopefully there won't be. The only, the only problem I can foresee yeah, is right. the, the background noise from my kid. Yeah, that's it. Make as much noise as you like. I'm back. I'm going to start the show in about a minute, although it's a couple of minutes early, just to check that it does actually go out and everything works okay. And if it doesn't? If it doesn't, then <laughs> I'll, do, I'll cope with that when I, when I cross that bridge. <laughs> I don't know. Go on, let's start it now and see what happens. Well, I've got a couple of things still to set up, but in about 60 seconds I will start live. Cool. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. You know better, but I decided that. Uh, yeah, from a third person view, I enjoyed yesterday the, the uh, answer to Nora on her gravity point. I seen I seen Nora's presentation on gravity on, on with Travis, and I seen Riley's reply, you know, rebuttal to that. I seen the show yesterday, so it's very interesting. What's going on down here? Yeah, I mean, this thing about gravity, right? It's it seems to be a massive argument within flat Earth, right? But what pisses me off is, according to the science, it seems to be the case that it only represents fifty millionth of the mass of the or the weight of the object in question. Why the fuck is it a massive fucking deal within flat Earth? It's the ballers that gotta prove it. We don't have to prove fuck all. They can't prove it, and Nora's fighting their battle for them, and it's like, what the fuck are you doing? Leave them to it, let them do it. Welcome to Flat Earth Debate. I'm your host, Nathan Oakley, and if you are new to this, my second channel, then be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. If you'd like to support this channel, there is a super chat that runs alongside each of these shows while they're live. There's also a PayPal and crypto link in the info box below the video. Most importantly, though, if you would like to join the discussion, simply mute the page you are currently watching, then click the link in the info box below this video to join the panel and express your views on the shape of the earth. 
If you do join, please don't swear. If you do, you'll be ejected. And if you are, please don't try to rejoin the stream using sock accounts. You'll be warmly welcome back on the next stream. Please also share the show on social media. Sharing the show obviously increases the live audience, but this in turn increases the chances of a more diverse panel. So please share the show. And one last time, if you're new to the channel or you've not done so already, be sure to subscribe and hit the bell notification icon to keep up to date with the Flat Earth Debate. Now we are joined by The Plain Truth, Sleeping Warrior and Jose JG Soundly Slayer Gonzalez. Good to have you all. Hello, you... hello, hello. What? what What channel are we on? What, what, what broadcast channel are we going on? Say again, Anthony, it's been, it's been a bit of a disastrous morning for me. My kids are now screaming your head off, so it's uh, it's been topped off nicely. What did you say? What channel are you broadcasting this show on? Nathan Oakley, my second channel. Letting the people in, in the other chat know because there's like 26 waiting. Uh, life's hard. Can't stream on that channel. Life is hard. Life is hard. Right, before we get into um, housekeeping, and whilst I know that Nathan's preoccupied with child, I'm going to give a massive shout out. A massive shout out to somebody that I would never, ever, ever, ever consider shouting out. And we're not going to even retract it. Because there's a guy that is basically completely anonymous. And to, <clears throat> on the one hand, Red's rhetoric says, well, what does his face have to do with the argument that he makes? But on the other hand, um, the bit that Reds doesn't um, acknowledge is that um, it massively increases the credibility of uh, of the, the work that you create if you if you're open about what you're doing and, and who you are. Um, what have we all got? What's any of us got to hide? Really, nothing. Um, the only people that have, have to hide this this identity stuff um, are the people that have got reason to hide it, and none of us have got a reason to hide it. Yo. Or have we? So, so last night I got wind that uh, Soundly was actually broadcasting on cam, and um, I, had to go and have a, I had to go and have a quick sniff and see what was going on. And sure enough, there he was. And to be honest, he was not unlike I expected him to look. Um, I, I, when you listen to someone's voice talking, you have this in, you build up this mental picture of what you think that person looks like. I was gobsmacked when I saw what Soundly actually looked like. I had no idea what he was going to look like. No, I had no accuracy on what I thought he was going to look like compared to what he actually did. So I'm just going to give a massive shout out to Soundly for actually revealing his identity and actually showing that he is actually a real person and he's not some kind of uh, wizard behind a cloak of mag mystery and majesty. And he's just a bloke. And that, for me, significantly increases the um, perception or the perceived credibility of his work. Soundly, we want to take him a little bit. Well, he's not on the bottom. Sorry, hold on a second. Hold on. Hold on. Anthony, who's making that noise? Who keeps snorting down their microphone? Not me. Might have been me, sorry. That was I, I only heard it once, but it sounded like someone laughed after Anthony said something. Yeah, that was me. Sorry. Naughty boy, Arwen. Sorry, but I was on that hangout, just for your information. I was in the panel for almost more than uh, one and a half hour or something, up until the end, pretty much. Did you know? On, um... on Soundly's hangout, on Tim's, yeah. Oh no, I'm not on about that. He was on. Tw oh right, so he was on twice last night. I guess. I, I saw him on until um, five o'clock because of that. I saw yeah, him. Yeah, he was. was he was on. He was on Tim's hangout. Sally was. Yeah, on I didn't Tim's see him on Tim's. I saw him on. Um, it was on his own channel. He was interviewing what's his face uh, conspiracy cats. Ah, uh, well, they had a. I had a giant debate. Like Tim really tried to make a proper debate. It was kind of clumsy at it. But it, yeah, you did, you did your thing. I had an actual debate with Soundly. It was really Ooh. fascinating to do. Well, fair play to Soundly. Um, I've got not, I don't really have a lot of good things to say about Soundly, but I will give credit where it's due, and he deserves credit. Thank you for coming out and showing that you are actually human, that you haven't got like two heads, that you actually exist. So, fair play, Soundly. Wouldn't ordinarily do that, and believe me, I'm saying it through gritted teeth, but it's a tip uh, of the cap. I it's understand where you're coming from, Slipping Water, because it's, it's always a little more respect with somebody that you can look to the eye or at least see their their eyes you know their demeanor and the, 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 their face you know so yeah I, i'll give him that yeah it more a lot more respect to him for that I guys, do you guys agree that he kind of does look a little bit like elon musk I, um i don't know i didn't really go up at him i just kind of glanced at him and thought bloody hell that's not what i expected 
I thought he looked like like Elon Musk, or maybe Elon Musk is his retarded clone or something, because he looks a little bit better, and he's a little bit better spoken as well. But he reminded me of Elon Musk so much. No. Hey, Nathan, what you need to do, I'll give the other chat um, like a, a minute warning that you're going to shut down that advert so that they, they get forced out. Well, no, mind you, they won't get forced out of there, will they? No, it permanently runs because it's an OBS feed. So just as long as I've got the link in that, great. That's what you need. Yeah, I'll be slightly more absent than from this show because I'm checking loads of things to make sure everything's working correctly, which it's not entirely perfect <laughs> at the moment but nevertheless so if you don't hear a great deal from me that's why right. on, a second, on a second note, way, so. <clears throat> on a second note I should have been in bed asleep last night when uh, I was wrapping up getting ready to go to bed I was watching Patricia she finished doing what she was doing and I was getting ready for going to bed and then I saw this bloke by the name of Hith H-I-I-T-H and um, I've never seen him live before, but he was live and he was just dicking around on Flat Earth Society pages and trying to research Flat Earth whilst referencing the, the one thing that we all consider to be the Antichrist, the Flat Earth Society. Nobody in the Flat Earth discussion actually references anything ever from ha um, the Flat Earth Society. So that's where he's researching and that's where he's getting his disinfo from about the reality of the world in which we live. So I, I flagged an attention um, message to him, and uh, he saw it, and um, he said that he was too busy. He didn't want to give me a link, and uh, he didn't want to talk science. He was only there re to research Flat Earth, but he was researching Flat Earth Society, right? But anyway, um, I had a bit of a back and forth with him, and he he basically said, do me a video with your request, and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll respond to it. Um, so I've just literally uploaded a video now on my channel. Um, if everybody, do, can, can, the, can, can the guys in chat do me a big favor? Um, go over to Hith's channel and um, basically tell him that there's a, a video there that he's for his attention because I want him to answer a couple of questions on the Cavendish experiment and the independent variable because uh, he, he, he claims to do science, but uh, he can't do science. So we'll see how that goes. So uh, just either go to my channel and uh, click the link in the description and it'll take you to Hith's channel. Uh, alternatively, and I'll just update that now. Alternatively, um, just go to his channel, H-I-I-T-H, and just bully the guy a little bit. Let him know that there's a video there for his attention. It's all good. Maybe he'll be the next time I'm done with 100,000 subscribers. I have never heard anybody say the H as a H. <laughs> so what, how do you pronounce his channel name? Oh, I don't know. I'm just saying when you say H, you say H. Well, it's H I I H I T H. I don't yeah, even but know. You. We Americans, we say H. We say H. We don't. We don't. We don't say H. <laughs> <laughs> it's H. It's speech. It's <laughs> anyway, I'm just. I'm just busting on you, Anthony. <coughs> to, be honest, I was, uh, to be honest, I wasn't sure what you were busting me on. Was it on the pr my pronunciation of H? Yeah, the the letter. Just say H H. As opposed to what? H. H. You say it with an H at the front. <laughs> <laughs> the, the H is actually silent in the word H. H. But it's so. not a word, is it? It's a letter. And I'm yeah, pretty but when sure you it pronounce it H. as a word, then the H itself becomes silent. That's the hilarious thing about it. So, would would you would you <laughs> spell a letter with a word? <laughs> yeah. Then within that word, the letter <laughs> you itself. The letter, you use the letter like, in the word that you use to right, describe right. the it letter. It becomes silent. <laughs> That's awesome. More, <laughs> more <laughs> logic. Yes, no, I'm, I'm moving the logic. Yeah. Spell a letter with a word. It's Anglo logic. It's the logic of English. Yeah, so make sure um, make sure you go onto my channel. Just click the link and go over to his video. Um, a, it'll count as a link, a like. Make sure you smash the like button if you do, or even smash the dislike button, as, as Nathan says, smash it twice. Uh, but go over to his channel for me and just bully him a little bit so that he's aware that he's got to do something, because he did say, send me a video. And I, I have done the video, and I want him to answer a couple of questions for me on science. And if we don't bully him, he'll not do it, because um, he's one of the millennial kids, isn't he? He's, he wears eyeliner as well, which is kind of amazing. What, what, what question? Oh, 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 is, oh, is he that one that's like real skinny and he's got long black hair? He's got dark hair, but he's, um, yeah, he is skinny. He, he's got, he looks yeah, like I've, earrings. I saw him on uh, one of the things. He had his hair cut. He had like um, a comb over, like, um, oh, you're talking about know. the kid that looks like he's like 15 years old. Yeah. 
Like, You're not uh, talking about me, right? Are you kidding me? No, no, we're not talking about you. Because I do you got have the long hair stash. and comb over and wear black and all of that. So, no, well, you I, got I, the I, wizard I, stash, Arvin. Because he's clearly vain, right? He wears eyeliner. And, and, and <laughs> oh God. He, <laughs> Oh. He wears earrings, eyeliner, and stuff like that. And Yo. like, he actually has foundation or blusher on on one of his ah. videos. He's got a white neck that's as white as a bottle of milk, but then his his face looks like he's just had a facial tan, but only his face. He's, he's, he's mad. I don't understand. But anyway, I had well, to um, maybe he has a face printer. I had to put a couple of um, like digs in the video where I put like aesthetically pleasing pictures of me and telling him how pretty, how much prettier that I am compared to him, and I'm thirty eight. <laughs> Just to poke, you know, give him a poke because he's clearly got vanity issues. So, <laughs> <coughs> so anyway, yeah. So shout out to Soundly um, without the retraction. Hold on, hold on, and before shout you move off, Hith. Before you move off, Hith. What were the science-related questions that you had? Um, well, I asked him in his hangout. Um, could he define for me what the independent variable was and the dependent variable was without looking it up? And uh, he, 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 he kind of got what. He answered the independent variable correct in that he said that you manipulate it, but he didn't say it was the presumed cause in your experiment. Um, the dependent variable he got wrong. Um, he said that it's the data that you get from the um, the observation or whatever, and that's not really what it is. Um, obviously, the dependent Heck, man. variable. Man, effect's like frustrating. Shout out to Raven Song for the super chat. Merry Christmas, Nathan. Give him hell. Love you, bro. Thank you very much, Raven Song. Who's got who's making beeping noises in the background? Me, me, me. I'm shooting. Oh, right, okay. The show still hasn't started, by the way. Oh. Yeah, it's on the second yeah. channel, Arwin. Oh! Oh, okay. Yeah, so if you're All watching right. this and are unaware that this is live streaming on my second channel, yes, I have had a community guideline strike for about a three-and-a-half-year-old video, which is slightly heartbreaking. But there we go. I'm not unset up or unprepared for this. It's happened before. It'll no doubt happen again, so it's not a shock. Just move on and carry on live streaming on the second channel, which is precisely what we're doing. However, obviously, this is a far less subscribed to channel than my main Nathan Oakley 1980 channel. So if you're watching this and don't realize, subscribe to Nathan Oakley. If you're watching this on the re-upload on the Nathan Oakley 1980 channel with the uncut and after show, which is how it will now get rebroadcast on the main channel as opposed to this channel, then subscribe to my backup channel. Obviously, this is the backup channel if you're watching it live. Very confusing. How do we know this is live? If you do a shout out or two on somebody in the panel, maybe read their comment. That's the only way we know it's live. Sorry, that that question. I'm, you've got to get some stick for that. We know we're live because we're talking to each other. We, we're definitely <laughs> live. That's hilarious. Yeah, if you go we to Nathan recording. Recording, you'll see that we are I'm live not on there. Yeah. We're all watching right now. I can see it. You, you sure you're okay with that, Jose? Uh, well, I, know, I know we are live, but maybe the people in the chat, they say, oh, no, this is a rerun show. Evidence that this is a live show, says Secret Asian Man. Okay, fair enough. You are echoing this. That's your scientific here. proof. <laughs> scientific proof that we're live. No, I think, I think yeah. we're good. I think we are can you, live. Can you, you vary the, the independent variable in this case? I didn't catch that. My kid was talking. Say again, Owen. Well... The being live part must be the independent variable. So can you vary being live? Uh, yeah, but be careful though, because we're not trying to scientifically prove that we're live. We're just proving that we're live, I right? I am. Well, if you guys are going to claim science, then it's got to be scientific. There's a difference between just proving it generally, colloquially, and proving it within science. And if it's not within science, that makes it just, you know, not scientific. So what's, the what's the natural phenomenon there? What's the observed phenomenon? The show yeah, we're not doing it within being on. Are we? we're, we're just doing it as normal people. We can prove that we're live, but you can't prove that we're live within the scientific method. Hang on, could you? What's the observed phenomena? There appears to be a show live. Yeah, we could. We yeah, could manipulate an independent phenomena. Phenomena. But that's it's not a natural just... phenomenon. That's right. just Hold a on. Stop, phenomenon. stop, stop. Science is <laughs> purely concerned with the physical and natural world, not live hangouts, right, which are definitely made by man. So it's not a natural phenomena. Yet yeah, you could call it a phenomena. This show is a phenomena. <laughs> but it's well, not why don't we interpret this? As... That's where I was going, Nathan. That's where I was going, man. Oh my yeah, god! Yeah. I stole your thunder. <laughs> chocolate, I'm here. sorry. <laughs> so what, why don't we interpret this from a baller's perspective about how we can claim that something's scientific when it's really not, and pretend that it's scientific, and then all of a sudden it becomes dead credible? Then oh, I could do that easy. The body of science says we are live. Yeah, that's how it works. The whole body of science. Shout out to Rumpus. <laughs> 
Yeah, exactly. So I've got an electrical device. That's science. It tells me we're live. That's science. Yay. Well, I got Everything this. Science. I got a little sentence like right beneath the name Nathan Oakley of your channel that says started streaming 15 minutes ago. So that's my evidence. Oh, that one's a good line from Karen B. She says, other channels are live, so you must be live. Oh, I love that one. Oh, oh here we go. We're having the uh, Flat Earthers flex their logical fallacy muscles. Is that what's going yeah. on? Yeah. Why not? I like it. Why not? Why not? Yeah. Well, no, it's good. It's good. It demonstrates the understanding of the logical fallacy if you can formulate your own for a gag. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. So uh, what other logical fallacies can we apply on purpose? So everybody else is live, so we must be live. Um, what else are there? The globe, the globe of the heavens is a sphere, so the Earth must be a sphere underneath it, within it. If the chat feed is running live, we must be live. I see chat feed running live, therefore we must be live. Shit, I'm on the wrong channel. Yeah, the point of a, affirming the consequent, the reason it is a logical fallacy is that the one doesn't necessarily follow the other. So in the case of my original channel, the main channel, Nathan Oakley 1980, it's got a chat feed running right now. So Anthony's logic would suggest if you've got a live chat feed with people chatting live, then it must mean that there's a live stream. If P, then Q. I see a live stream, Q, therefore we are live. P. Well, in reality, no. There's a live stream published, there's a live chat running, but that show isn't running. So yeah, one I'm doesn't on necessarily channel. follow the other. That's why it's a logical fallacy to affirm the consequent. In most instances no. with the globe, they're also begging the question. So they're starting with an outcome that they are assuming in the first instance anyway. Because it doesn't necessarily follow that just because you formulated your logic fallaciously, that it doesn't actually mean it's true. Well, it does if you're begging the question to begin with. So if you're assuming your outcome, in this case sphere, and then begging the question after you formulate it into a formal logical fallacy, i.e. affirming the consequent, then you are begging the question and affirming the consequent. So it's two fallacies in one. Do you know what? Eleanor makes more sense than any of the ballers that join this panel. Especially Laurie. Laurie. I mean, Eleanor literally can outspeak Laurie. She even knows the distance. I concur with that. Yeah. Hey, Laurie, have you found out the, the uh, circumference of the Earth yet? Oh, God. I know, yeah, he won't have done it. Laurie says, he blocked me when I showed him too much evidence. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, it makes you wonder whether this community strike was instigated by some begruntled YouTube user with the, uh, the ball earth fallacy logic, or was it somehow triggered by some other way? Because it's like so old, it's like someone's really had to do some serious amount of digging if that's really what they're doing. Yeah, what video was it exactly? Do you know, Nathan? Yeah, Mechanics of the Fourth Wall, False Flag, Hoaxes, and Flat Earth. False Flag related. Yes. Oh dear, yeah, that's... You've got to be careful with that these days. Yeah, so look, this reminds me... Of, this reminds me of Rumpus. You can't sense the reality, Nathan. Yeah, but this, this is a proof that you actually can. Don't mention False Flags. have to talk about yourselves for a bit my kids are uh, needing a bit of attention all right so in that case then i'll take over from nathan whilst he's uh, on kid patrol let's go through rattle through the housekeeping really quick is there any evidence of a curvature of the earth no. i say no travis you've been shooting video you find any curve yet uh, you just have to ignore perspective and obstruction no, caused no, by diffraction, it's... and then the curvature is all over the place. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and it's only it's only there if you have a bit of like like obscurity on the horizon, you know, like smudge, and then that's the curve. When there's no smudge there, and it's clearly obvious that you're seeing like far too much of the building that you're looking at, then that that's not that's not curved. Then there's no smudge there, then it, it must be refraction. <laughs> Every time it's just right. So what about? Uh, any scientific evidence of gravity? Oh, hold on, actual rotation comes first. I don't. I'm doing this ad hoc. I'm doing this like without any script. I'm trying to remember these things. I don't need no a script to get you it right. I've heard it every day for more than a year now. All right. Any evidence of axial rotation then? No. Right. No. 
No. Nope. Earth is stationary. Let, does anybody need to... Let, let's have someone explain why the stars don't prove axial rotation. Anyone? Well, they're not physical, so whatever they're doing up there is no indicator of the Earth itself actually being in motion. And even if they are physical, an axis means that you've got one up at top and one down below. And obviously, when you when you ask somebody where's south, they always point to the horizon. So actually, we should be pointing through the floor, underneath your feet, underneath your ass. That's where south is supposed to be. But nobody ever does that, do they? Everybody points to the horizon in a direction or a bearing that they think is south. Let's right. say it was south, but it's not actually south, is it? So where's that axis? Where's the axial rotation and using the stars as proof? Nobody can prove it. And, and it's not just humans pointing south. It's also the compass that doesn't actually point straight down, which you know, it that's been one of the biggest arguments for me, and no one ever brings it up. Why does a compass work when it's when it's perpendicular to the uh, the claim of south? Isn't a compass proof that it, it must be a flat plane because otherwise it wouldn't work? Uh, it should only properly work on the equator. <laughs> yeah, or, uh, because every any time you come close to any of the poles, it's just gonna even come close, even like at 55 five degrees of the supposed ball uh, latitude, then yeah, it will start to just slant down and basically break. <laughs> yeah, it's bad. I, I've always wondered why compasses are flat earth proof. No one ever mentions them. So what about any scientific evidence for gravity? No. No. Nope. Travis? So it's gonna be a while. <laughs> <laughs> right. Until we get True close minutes. to a, a <laughs> attempting some kind of scientific proof, even. No. So, let's so you, didn't come, you didn't come to the conclusion it was gravity with the coconut, Travis, in the island? <laughs> uh, I did not. Dang. All worth, right. Is it worth reminding people the problem with gravity, right? Scientific evidence for gravity, right? How are you going to do it? It's the essence of my video on HIF. Um, wh whichever gravity model you ascribe to, um, you can't really ascribe to the, the bending of space-time because that's literally, it's a reification fallacy. It's a mathematical model that has zero evidence to prove that it's true. And because it's a mathematical model, a mathematical model, but if you ascribe to Cavendish, then you've got to show that there is a 50 millionth variation in the object's weight whilst you manipulate your so-called gravity. And obviously the only way you can manipulate gravity is to be God himself. So unless you are God, you can't comply with the scientific method and prove, scientifically speaking, that there is gravity because nobody can manipulate gravity. Ballers all think that Cavendish proves it. Uh -uh. Even if Cavendish did prove it with these moving balls, it's by induced logic only. And that's not proof. You're assuming, you're presuming that God can do that. Well, the reification... And if it's not there, though. Yeah. God can do anything, can't he, right, according to whatever. No, but he can't do things that can't be done. Let's not bring it down to the God level, because that really opens a can of worms. Uh, when I said God, I meant it with a little g. Oh. <laughs> Oddly, little g being... <laughs> the irony of little g being God. <laughs> right, I like that. The little g, no, 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 no. That That's actually the the presumed gravity constant in... <coughs> Just the, just the coincidence that little g being in God as in, like, the creator, like, not necessarily a religious God with a capital G, but little g being God. I'm going to just cite that little g every time I see Cavendish or anything to do with little g is God. Because that just, that's, if you're going to believe that, then, yeah, you might as well have a religion. So, uh, that's three. How many questions do we have? Six. Uh, we still have the vacuum next to the gas pressure, the molten iron core, and of course... Yeah, any evidence of a molten iron self-perpetuating ball of gloriness in the center of a sphere? <laughs> no, thank you. No, I like that illustration. <laughs> Why do people right. believe this nonsense? It's ridiculous. I mean, because, you're told because you're there's candy cool. that's just like that. Yeah. The My favorite. Molten iron self-perpetuating... Whatever the core is, right? Proof it's a like little core. chocolate surface with a molten strawberry like core or something. Yeah, no, it sounds no, more no, like a sweet from Cadbury's, isn't it? A Malteser. I, th I, I think it's most possible. I think it's most pl most plausible to freaking show the gas, uh, the pressure, you know, the container type of thing. You know, uh, it's uh, hold on. Uh, I go now. It's easier, I think, to travel to freaking outer space than 
freaking show me that the earth is layered that way up down to the center of the earth. That ridiculous it is. Do you know, I, someone sent me a clip last night from um, microblogginism on um, GeoStreamer's Hangout, and he said that you, it's actually impossible to get a picture of Earth from space. You know, like a full frame of like the blue marble? There you go. He said it's impossible to get that. And I, I'm not, I didn't, I did hear it, but I can't remember what the reason was. But I, um, I talked about it. But if it's impossible to get a picture of the Earth from space, right, how is it you can argue pictures from space as your evidence for curve? Indeed. It is ridiculous. But I argued yesterday on Tim Tim's Hangout that if they, if whoever's going to take that picture of Earth is actually going to go the real distance and take that picture of Earth, they're going to see a gaseous, misty surface of perhaps a ball or a square or a circle whatever it's going to be but you're not going to see the earth's surface because there's too much gas in between the observer and the earth's surface so just like when you look into the distance the lack of air clarity is going to cover up what you see so is the entire earth going to be covered up by a lack of air clarity so you're never going to see the the earth surface in an entire picture <laughs> Without, well, maybe, maybe, without we, doing close-ups. But we and can see on a clear had night. They had to Photoshop, otherwise you wouldn't see the Earth's surface. But and we can it, see on a clear night the uh, the clear skies, and we can see the firmament. I mean, the stars. So it's like perhaps if you were in the firmament looking down on a clear night, you could actually see your own ass in a telescope, maybe. All right. Well, I suggest that just because we can see stars above us from the Earth's surface doesn't mean that from high up you could just as well just as clearly see the earth's surface i, I suggest I that it, that is not the case i just find it like so hypocritical that microblogginism can say that you can't get a, it's impossible to get a picture of the earth from space um if for what a full frame picture of the earth from space i don't know why he says that i'm going to get that sound bite actually because that's a debunk for pictures from space <laughs> in my opinion Finally what channel was that? was that on got Tim's? To sleep. Ah, hooray. Well, we got to the fourth question, Nathan, so we're on five Where did you get to? What did you cover? Axial rotation, curvature, gas pressure without a container, and molten iron core? Gravity. Yeah. Any, yeah. Any scientific evidence of gravity? Uh, We've done that one. Oh, okay. <laughs> Any evidence of the distance to the sun? Uh, no. No. <laughs> there is no distance to the sun. Well, last but not least, then, any evidence of the R value, Earth radius? Uh, no. It exists in math, and math Gas is pressure there. without a container. More important, we missed that one. Did we not cover that? Okay. Any evidence that we can have gas pressure without a container for all the people who believe in outer space being a vacuum? Uh, no. Nope. <clears throat> I think what we should do, Nathan, is consider changing the format of uh, housekeeping a little bit. Not because it's boring even though it is boring, but because if we like color it with some, instead of saying um, like no to the question for all the evidence, maybe we should consider just um, presenting the counter evidence that proves all these claims are nonsense. Like just by playing like a really carefully, like, you know, like a really short clip that's like say 10 seconds or something, five seconds to literally show the counter argument and how it's silly. So for example, a balloon popping, do you remember you did that balloon popping on the, on the sofa to demonstrate that you can't have a gas pressure next to a, uh, like a disequilibrium without a, a membrane of some kind. We definitely live in a disequilibrium if we're at 14.7 PSI, simply popping a balloon. Yeah, the ballers laugh at it, but the point is, how do you have it without a membrane? And you can't have that disequilibrium without a membrane. So it's like, yeah, laugh at it by all means, but how are you going to do it? And they have to answer with gravity. It's like, all right, well, how are you going to prove gravity then? Are you God? I just find it interesting that they can't every it. time it's a false argument gravity can't do it even if it would exist exactly as they presumed that's the most idiotic thing about it even all of their presupp presuppositional models fail them in this concept and they just refuse to see it ridiculous <clears throat> what was tim's position with regards to simon dan i'm just looking at his hangout what did he? I didn't hear what he said about him. What was it? I'm assuming that he wasn't supporting him. Arwin. Sorry? Bloody hell, man. What Sorry. was Tim's position with regards to Simon Dan? I'm assuming that he wasn't supporting him. No, he was rid rid ridiculing him and 
<laughs> Lewis shared this ridiculous theory he had about that Simon Dan would be the perfect opportunity for the flat earthers out there that were looking for the opportunity to jump ship to m potentially get back to the ball in a safe manner that would make them lose face that that's that's what he that's what Lewis said do you know what I mean this is where it gets yes. stupid because <clears throat> if I was to jump back to the ball right I wouldn't need any particular person I would do it based on the evidence that I find that supported it so I wouldn't credit a particular baller I wouldn't discredit a particular baller. I'd just say, look, this is what I think proves that we live on a ball. And then people would then say that's bullshit. But the point is that I don't know whether, I don't know how you could put an argument together that Simon Dan would be an ex an excuse or a, it's nonsense. No, I mean, who's Sean G? I've not heard that name before. How did he end click? I heard Tim claiming that Sean G has moved, gone back to the ball. Well, what, what evidence did Sean G accept that put him on the ball? I mean, I respect his, his view that he's changed his position. Fair enough. But what was the evidence that he accepted that put him on the ball? Does anybody know? What What was his real position in the I've first place? Him. Was he some I've guy who talk. just said, yeah, I'm a flat earther just because, and now he turned back to the ball? That's That would be extremely suspicious. So who is that guy anyway? Uh, you for, you forgive me because I don't know exactly, but I have. I was in, uh, I heard him talk. I was in the Discord once a while ago, uh, a few weeks ago, and he was talking on Jim Pandas. I think it was the first time. And everybody like, yeah, praising to him. I'm applauding him. You left the flutter. That was good. You're the biggest name after Tiger Dan and freaking Jamie Brown and Chris Monksilly, now you. So everybody should start leaving flutter soon. And he gave his point of view, but I, I apologize. I don't remember at all. It has to do with the bullshit on the lights in the sky that you see probably i mean it's probably that like i don't know how some such work in a freaking flat earth or the two polar stars you know all the presupposition that you got to take that you have to think they're antipodal from you like the stars or like the sun is a giant giant ball of freaking gas uh, all all that presupposition shit so i don't know i mean i don't see any weight on why if he was a real flat earther why he changed his stand because he has to, I mean, he still say, oh, I still question things, but I'm hey, not even flattered anymore. So I call that bullshit. Hello, Alan. Hi, how are you doing? Very well, thank you. You ready for Christmas? I am. Well, I haven't got anything for my wife yet, but other than that, all the rest of the family are done. How about you? Not too bad. Might do some baking. Got all my presents wrapped. Excellent. Yeah, same here. My tree's looking nice with all the presents underneath. Right, Tony, I got your chocolate egg. Yeah. <laughs> Wait, so chocolate does it get a chocolate egg? What the hell, man? I can't send that to New York. Cost me a fortune. <laughs> ah. Too far away. You're on the wrong side of the pond. I'll the send it to The bendy send pond. The bendy pond. <laughs> you just took the words out of my mouth. <laughs> I'll, send to I'll send Tony the milk chocolate and dark chocolate one. Alan, I want some flip-flops with my name on it for Christmas. Hey, snitch. How's it going? You I want flip-flops with my name on it. <laughs> flip-flops? Like no, it. wait a minute. Yeah, I heard snitch. What the fuck is that, snitch? No swearing, Just, heard you, just heard you snitching about Sean G. Sean G is an ass. He was, I mean, he is an ass. Oh, just, what, I, what? I don't know him. I don't know where he come from, but he's an ass. Tony Joe. <laughs> Sean forget, G. Forget the, right, forget the personality. What was the reason why he, he jumped ship? What was the point that he accepted? That you can't supply any answers to any of his questions. Sorry, that's not really, really a reason to leave. We don't know any of his answers. So is there a specific point that's proven the ball to him you that you're aware of? Get Sean on. You want me to get Sean on? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yes, I please. want to know what That'd evidence he accepted. Not, not awesome. The, yes, not please. The yes, yes, please. Yeah, I want to know the evidence he accepted, not the issues that we don't understand. I don't want to know that. I want to know what was the positive evidence that he had to, exp to, to justify his position. That's good to hear from him, yeah. Good. He's a yes, polite he guy. I hope he's a polite guy and he can have Whoa. a discussion, you know? I mean, it was the first question we asked of Chris Monk when he switched sides. And both Anthony and I, I believe, were on the same phone call. Was it you, Anthony? Might have been someone else. Anyway, whoever, still it, to him? whoever it was, I was on a phone call with Chris Monk and 
whoever I was on the phone call with, I thought it was Anthony, although he's not confirmed that, um, grilled him on what his position was and why he changed his position and what evidence he had to support his new position. And he showed us, and it was horrendous. Yeah. It was me. I remember asking him. and It was you. He I started, it was. His, initial, his initial answer was, um, it's a preponderance of evidence. And I was like, yeah, but what specifically made you even consider changing your mind? And his answer was to do with the results of the uh, fiber optic gyroscope test with the Globusters. He, he accepts that um, it, the, the 15 degrees of momentum proves that the Earth is spinning. Um, he does not accept that the mechanical gyros fail to produce that 15 degrees. And he also does not accept that there is no phase shift evidence to support the idea that we're orbiting the sun. So as a result of the fiber optic gyroscope tests, his possession, position is now that the Earth's sphere, the Earth's sphere um, but is, we're spinning um, rather than geocentric where we're not spinning. So he's got a hybrid because he accepts the 15 degrees shows that we are spinning, but he doesn't accept that there's no phase shift. So we can't accept that there's an orbit because that would require the phase shift. So he thinks that we're now uh, spinning, but we're not orbiting the sun, that the sun's coming around us, but that we are spinning. Weird. He's a hybrid. As far as I know, he's the only guy with that model. So he says we're spinning without spinning. He says that we're spinning, but the, uh, the sun and moon must be relative to us spinning. Which, you know, makes sense, but um, it's, I think he's the only one with that model. I might be wrong, but... I mean, so that was really non-stationary geocentric globe. Yeah, 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 yeah. A non-stationary geocentric globe. He gave me a different reason. So he said that the uh, horizon would only rise to eye level on a sphere. And I said, you've got to be joking, right? He went, no. And then I said, well, how would you possibly come to that conclusion? And then he showed me on his model and he rose up and the horizon rose with him on his sphere model and I looked at it and went Chris you've anchored the um, location to the earth in other words like in the metabunk calculator as he raised in altitude it pivoted pointed the camera further down as he rose up and then, and that as soon as he did that knowing full well that he had gone through that point with me on countless occasions when we were doing some of the Isle of Man stuff I knew he was being completely and utterly disingenuous. And at that moment, I cut Chris out of my life and didn't care any more about what he had to say. Because he was being disingenuous. He had fixed, you know, he'd done it in the model. He had had to have physically done that. But in order to see, presumably to show me, oh, well, he can only do certain things certain ways on a globe. And then he could show me in his model that it, the horizon rose to our level. It was just by chance that I paid attention when he was making the models for hours and hours and hours previously that I noticed that it anchored the, um, the what do you call it, the location that the camera's actually pointed at. So like the target location, that's where it anchored the camera. So like I say, as he raised and lowered the position the in the model, is, it pivoted the camera and I was like, that's wrong. You know that's the thing wrong, is, Chris. Like, I know that's wrong. The thing is, Nathan, whilst that is true, that did happen. That didn't happen. for the, when I When we had the conversation with Chris for what changed his mind, that conversation that you've just recited was about two weeks before <laughs> I had a conversation with him specifically with what was the evidence that he accepted. And his answer was fiber optic gyroscope results proved that we were spinning at 15 degrees an hour. Um, and I said to him immediately, I said, well, where's the phase shift when, you, when we're orbiting the, the sun? And he, he didn't have an answer for it. And um, well, he actually said that, um, global, uh, that um, uh, FE Core had not released the results. Um, and the answer is, well, FE Core don't own the thing to release. They don't have the results to release. So when I asked about this information... Hey, Spec. You hey, guys, how's it going? Yeah, not bad. I saw your comments floating by in Tim Osman's chat while they're talking about um, quantum mechanics. That gave me a bit of a chuckle as well. Oh, yeah, those guys are clowns. Yeah. What's up, Spec? So, anyway, that's that's where he's at. He's at mm, that's it. So, Karen B. say in the chat, he was always dishonest, and he admitted that he infiltrated, flattered, just to debunk it from the inside. That's what's Karen B. Said. Yeah, as far as I'm aware, he admitted to being um, a Trojan horse. So if, if you're going to admit that you're a Trojan horse, that's what does it what does it mean then in that context? You know, it means that on, that you say he's credible. It's character suicide. Yeah. You managed to get hold of him. Alan, you there? Hi. Hi. No, he's not, he's not replied yet. I'm sorry, I'm distracted. I'm changing no worries, the battery. No 
I, did, I didn't expect him to reply immediately, but maybe he hadn't um, said, nah, it's not <laughs> You just never know. I'm changing, a battery. I'm changing a battery in an iPhone 6. It's quite tricky. That sounds very uh, intricate for a, a fumbling old man. Not old. I can use a screwdriver. Got an iFixit kit, have you? What are you saying, Tony? I'm not a woman age 60. No, I'm just saying that you're a fumbling old man. I don't know why you inferred that I was I was saying you're a woman in age 60. I see the connection, if you don't. I see the connection, too. Hey, you know you're not broadcasting, right? Yeah, we are, just on the second channel. <laughs> this is going to oh, happen a lot. Okay. So I've had a community guideline strike for a three-and-a-half-year-old video, therefore I can't stream on the original channel for three months, therefore we're going to be streaming on here. This is the second channel. If you're watching this and unaware that it's the second channel, be sure to subscribe. You'll also get the uncut and after show on my main channel after this show finishes. So when the second live show finishes on this channel, hey, plain truth, is that really you? Hello, hello, hello. Um, once this finishes live, you'll also get the pre-show straight afterwards on my main channel. And then at 11 a.m. the following day, UK time, or 11, 1100 hours GMT, you'll get the after show. Hey, physics. Tweet, tweet. Good to have you. Pretty good, Nathan. Thank you for asking. You cannot trust anybody on the flutter. We just got a shout out to the Dodo and Aristarchus. Those are the only two we can trust. We, what, yeah, Piche? Yeah, no, no, just the Dodo and Aristarchus, not Piche. Shout out, retracted. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That was weird. Hey, you're, you're not allowed to retract shout outs, out, Alan. <sighs> That's our thing. You can't have that. <laughs> yeah, we we do all the retractions around here. Know your place. Yeah, right. I mean, so, Alan, you. is it the first time you've seen Salmi on camera last night? No. Has he been on camera before? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. It's the first time I've come across it. I think that's... Uh, first time I've seen him was like last week. Third time. I think that's the third time. Oh, credit for him coming on camera. It makes him look um, like normal. He got doxxed well recently. Someone I never found out what his name is. Maybe he'll just start using his name. That annoys me more than not going on camera. To be honest, it's like we're not in the schoolyard. These nicknames. Hey, Spec. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what I mean. Yo. It, 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 hey, someone Owen. likes Owly, you Just use your Owen name. Is my real it seems name. sad. I know all the people who are going to give me shit about ne legal name fraud. I don't care. You know, it's just one of those things. Alan. You know the you know the noun vanity <clears throat> vanity comes from the word vain. How do you spell vain? Which way how do you, how is the word vain spelt in that context? V A I N. Boom, yeah. Oh. Yeah, V A I N, not V A N E. Okay, just checking. Because vain yeah. that way would be um I think it's a blade. Correct. Blade? Sorry, what do you mean? Blade. A uh, sword, vein. And then you have the vein, V E or V A I N, that's like the archery thing, vein. So many veins. V A I N. Sorry, who knows, who knows the etymology? Where, where do you get from sword to vanity? I don't follow. I'm just responding to a message on my video, that's all. Sorry. That's different spelling, different spelling, V A N E. Oh, so V A N E is for vanity? No. V A I N is for vanity. Right, so v A N E is sword, so they're not connected. Yeah. Okay, sorry. No. And today's broadcast was brought to you by the letter E. I was going to say, your, your English is no. very good, though, isn't it, Alan? Let's be fair. You're a writer, right? The, the, the letter H. Wouldn't V E N E just be spelled as Veen, not Vein? And what is that for the for the vi the vines of of uh, like grapes for wine? How do you how do you spell that? W i n e. No, no, no. But the the vines. I mean, the grapes grow in not in trees or in roots in vines. I think it is. V i n e. Yes. <clears throat> What's going on? I have no idea. Know. It's, it's, it's yeah. spelling. What's my V and W let letter? I don't get it. <laughs> this is not very flat earth related. What was the link, Anthony? You started this. Anthony. How do you spell BMW? No, no, Anthony was obviously going somewhere with his vanity thing. So why were you asking him about vanity? Must have been a reason. I was only asking 
I was just responding to a comment on that video that I just uploaded about Hith, um, and I didn't know how to spell vein in that vanity context. I didn't want to get it wrong. It looked like I was saying vein as in jugular. So are you pushing this hit so he can grow the channel? Because if you're interacting with him, we in the flatter debates, the ones that have made most of these channels grow, and you guys know that. Nathan knows that, and we all know that. Yeah, I know, but I think I don't think this guy's. Um, I think he's got more subs than me anyway. I don't think that I'm going to do him any damage by promoting him. I think he's already there. I think. Let me see yeah, how many man. subs he's got. He currently has twenty-seven thousand subs. So I don't think I don't think he's going to gain anything by this show, to be honest. Oh, maybe you can push him to one hundred and fifty thousand. <laughs> yeah, the sideman dad effect. It's his haircut. Yeah, so basically, you know the butterfly effect. Um, if a butterfly <laughs> flaps its wings, does it get felt around the other side of the earth? Well, we should call it the Simon Dan effect. If you mention Simon Dan, you can guarantee that you, your subs are going to go hit the roof. Hundred thousand subs in less than six months. Woo! <laughs> I mean, I think it's pretty bad when even your fellow ballers are calling you out to be a fake. It's pretty bad. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't I mean, call Tim a fellow baller. Tim's a, 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 he's a flat earther in disguise in my book. He pretends to be a baller, but I actually think he's a, a gatekeeper for crap flat earthers. That's hilarious. They all it could have go, it, it could go either way. Us, guys, so. uh, Piché, shut up in the chat. Well, my, my attitude is suspicious because I got an opinion on something. I don't know what you're talking about, but Puerto Ricans, we got an attitude, so shut up. <laughs> Jose is going to block you. He's going to nice block word. you. Oh nice word, no. Whoa. <laughs> oh my god, I can't watch Pete's live stream. That's... <laughs> what will I do with my life? We're going to have a, a short break shortly, a couple of minutes. Just before we do, let's just remind everybody that's not up to date with the flat earth. I mean, the, the, the football. Jose Mourinho has been sacked as Man United <laughs> manager. <laughs> Nobody cares. Yes, very important. <clears throat> it is when the last result that they played was Liverpool and they got Dick 3 1. Yay. My team. No, not one of the ho Jose's on the panel. Pedro Gonzalez. No relation to you, I assume, Jose. Yeah, shout out to Pedro Gonzalez. He's uh, as much as family to me, like. Jose Igor Gonzalez, the baseball player, or Speedy Gonzalez, boom. <coughs> andale, andale. Arriba. Yes, indeed. Arriba, arriba, andale, andale. So where, where were we? Did we get through housekeeping? We did get through housekeeping. <coughs> Yay. Still no evidence of all then, Alan. Sorry, Tony, still on the battery. <laughs> Got to concentrate. This on that stuff. really small. So uh, we'll, we'll we'll just claim it for you. There's still no evidence of all, but you believe it anyway, which is fine. You know, you're entitled to your your religious views. Pay pay particular attention to the lens of the camera on the case when you put it back together, because if you get dust on it, believe me, it really pisses you off. After you finish the job, okay. and you go, go to open the camera, and there's dust in front of the lens. How do they make screws with one thread on? I know that I put ah oh, the the length of those screws is ludicrous, isn't it? Yes. Got my iPad back yesterday. Hooray! New screen, two hundred and fifty pounds lighter. And I said, ah, oh, as you're taking the screen out, you might as well put a new battery in. It's a couple of years old, you know. I only get six hours instead of eight hours. You know, it's only a couple of quid more to put a new battery in. So it's like, yeah, great, great. Puts a new battery in. Get it back. Charge it up takes an hour to charge very suspicious as it normally takes five unplug it instead of the usual eight hours i got eight minutes <laughs> and it died wow great so back without an ipad again no Marvelous. way just when i could so do with it as well hey tim how you doing hey i'm not here to snipe so please let me out wow to be on didn't, this panel didn't, thank you didn't suspect you were we're going to round out for a break shortly though tim Get the last word in. All right. Uh, well, I haven't been watching, but um, it's obvious and observable that the Earth is QED, uh, a sphere. So we'll get into that next show. And into, 
fair enough. He's had What's a really that? good show. I'd have had a drink after that show. Good hosting, Tim. Credit where credit's due. He did a really good job. What's going on, Timmy? Same. Same. Thank you. We will we will chat about this whole issue in the uh, after show as well as uh, the next show. So I'm here. I'm not sniping anybody. You can snipe me if you want, but um, we'll, oh, we'll, we'll have a chat. Big Tim, what's going on, man? <clears throat> I, I accepted your offer, Tim. Thanks for uh, joining. Bye. Have you kicked him? Oh, why did you, you do that? There was no need for oh. that. He said I could. <sighs> Tim, he doesn't Tim. Add up. Tim has turned a corner, right? Now, yeah, I don't like balls. him, but, you know, he's, he's no longer the... No, he, he said he, <sighs> he, he, said he could snipe him if I wanted. And I, I, I just had to, you know, I just felt that I'd like to, because he's, he's Tim. Not add anything to the conversation. He's got no evidence. He never. He doesn't share his evidence. Uh, he's a dick. Yeah, but he did say he wasn't going to do anything. He just wanted to talk. I know, yeah. but he also said that I could snipe him if I wanted, and I just took advantage of that. <laughs> I haven't got right, He basically asked me to do it. Riley, this has been a loopy episode. Like, we've been sitting here describing <laughs> letters, and like, come on, we need, we need at least <laughs> one baller to come in here so we can go at him. Come on. These guys discussing the whys and wherefores of sniping Tim totally unnecessarily while I say first and foremost a huge massive enormous thank you to all of you the live audience for tuning in and hopefully sharing this live debate and of course a massive thank you to all of the debating panel for making this debate possible. If you hated the show then smash the dislike button then smash it again. If you liked it, maybe consider sharing it with a friend or subscribing if you've not done so already. Also, a massive shout out to Raven Song for hitting the super chat. I've been Nathan Oakley, and I'll see you all in the next video. Oh, what a day! What a lovely day!